Right, hello and welcome to the Fresh Air Sci-Fi Show. I'm Joe. And I'm Dave. And I'm Philip. And uh, I do apologise for uh, that audio crap that was happening at the beginning and the slight delay to the stream. Uh, but what's a sci-fi stream without errors happening? And uh, maybe... Well, Philip has... Philip hasn't had a chance to use his magic powers in a while, so... <laughs> yeah, I, have to, I have to stretch them a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, just shout out to anyone that's currently watching in, and uh, if you say drop into the chat room like uh, that vegan agnostic guy just has, we'll say hello as well. How are you doing? Hope you're well. Um, we're we're looking forward to doing tonight's stream um, because for a long time we've been saying there are multiple definitions of atheism and that they're they're all valid. We've had discussions about why we prefer a particular definition over another and sometimes issues with other definitions. But this is often met with hostility and folks claiming that the lack of belief definition is the only definition or that all other definitions can be wrong. In an almost Highlanderish, there can only be one! Uh, Dave recently released a great video called Atheism, The Tale of Two Usages. If you haven't checked it out, honestly, it's really good. Uh, it's only about half an hour long, and he describes how atheism is defined differently, even by atheists, and how there really doesn't need to be this uh, war over a particular definition. Um, with some words, uh, the context can inform you of the definition, like theory in science, but with a word that's polysemous like atheism, even within philosophy, it's best to stipulate your use in each conversation or article to make sure that you're being understood. Uh, it was encouraging in our anniversary stream when we were talking to Autumn and Brina that they gained more understanding of uh, philosophical atheism, as many put it, uh, how it's used, and realised that they would fit that definition at least for certain gods. They would be keeping in the context of philosophy locally atheist but globally agnostic. Um, obviously we wouldn't prescribe our label onto them, it's just describing how they would be described in that context. Um, it was also encouraging that the conversation uh, was had without breaking down into that usual aggression and uh, poo-flinging that it almost always ends up being, uh, and so unnecessarily so. So it was great that these conversations have started to be had in a better way. And also with the increase over the last year or so with the push that this is uh, the only a lack of belief definition. Um, it's been encouraging to see more folks on YouTube like Cosmic Skeptic coming out to say that he now understands why atheism is defined as a proposition within most of philosophy rather than the psychological state, as he has pushed for for a really long time. Um, and we're starting to see more and more people uh, speak up about this. So recently, Rationality Rules has also posted a video talking about different definitions, and it's definitely a step in the right direction. And we think that there might be a few bits that he's either maybe slightly misrepresented or misunderstood, but, you know, all in all, it was a positive video, but we felt we'd review it and maybe clear a few things up. Um, now, obviously, we, we generally, we're only talking about two definitions of atheism as well when we're having these conversations, like the, the belief gods do not exist and lacking belief in gods. But there are actually quite a few. And this isn't an exhausted lift, but, a list, but there's the belief or proposition, God or gods do not exist. There's not believing in God or gods. There's lacking belief in gods. There's not being a theist. There's not ascribing to a particular religion or back to the original way that atheists was used, which was God forsaken. So someone could believe in the gods, but have lost their favor. So they were without the gods because they didn't have the gods favor rather than, you know, not believing in the gods of state, which it then became to be. So there are many, many different usages. And as I said, I probably haven't even listed them all there. And as the way language goes, <laughs> there'll probably be more over time. There's a bunch of atheists that use it in a bunch of different ways. And some are like idiosyncratic and some follow common ones. Yeah, there, there's just too many to list. Yeah, most definitely. So um, I'm going to quickly chuck things into uh, the magic uh, be right back mode so that I can uh, get the video sharing. And uh, it shouldn't take me too long, but we will be back in just a couple of seconds.
Right. Uh, oh, Philip, something's coming in from your mic there. There's some random noise coming in. Really? Someone hoovering in your room. <laughs> uh, no, that's just the fans on my computer, but that was never an issue so far. So No, 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 odd. No, it, it literally no, sounded like some... Them. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Is but it yeah. hot there tonight? I mean... Uh, no, not more than usual. I mean, it's always like this. It's just that usually it doesn't get across. I don't know why, but like for some reason tonight it decided to do that. Um, maybe because <laughs> I started to type on the computer and that's why it sort of activated the thing. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, I'm sure. It, it, no, wait, wait a minute. Is it still bad? Should I, should I try to adjust it some, somehow? Um, it just comes through very occasionally. Not, not for very long. It was just that one point when it was. Wait, wait a minute. I, I, I can try. I can try to to fix that. Maybe. Okay. Whilst you're just quickly doing that, I'll say hello to those who've joined us in the chat. Uh, we've had uh, Godless Scummer join us. How you doing? Or Ahoy, uh, Alistair. How you doing, man? Uh, looking forward to having you back on the stream at some point in the future. Uh, I had a really good time when you were here last. Uh, Chicky Wiki, how you doing? Uh, great to have you back. And Frida. Good to have you as well. Emerson, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, good to have you here as well. And Ravenclaw, excellent. Uh, so, oh, and Esmond, hello to you as well. All right. So uh, if you've just tuned in, um, we're, we're doing a review of Rationality Rules' as video. Um, Hopefully you understood everything I said at the beginning. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying it again just yet. <laughs> are you ready, Philip? Yeah, I mean, can you hear me now? Is it is it better? I hear you now. Okay, perfect. Then hopefully it's going to be okay. Oh, hey there, Autumn and Luke. Hey How you. are you doing? Uh, Luke, you say nice to see you. It's not nice to see you. I see you all the time. Cool. <laughs> Just kidding. It's always a pleasure to see you, Luke. Your little purple face. We love the purple guy. <laughs> Yeah, great to have you here as well, Autumn. Uh, hopefully, um, between uh, Rationality Rules this video and our, our comments, there'll be a complete picture uh, of what's being said. At least we hope so, anyway. <laughs> Not if I'm involved, I know nothing. <laughs> right, Dave, behind you, see that thing there that's like a long bit? That's a shelf, and on it, there's these things called books. There you go, you know two things now. I don't believe you. Have you got any empirical <laughs> evidence? <laughs> that is the empirical evidence. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, here we go. Uh, guys, yeah, shout the second you want to say anything. I'm also increasingly entering into this debate about the usage of the word atheism and whether it's uh, appropriately used to describe simply a lack of belief in God. I've always very strongly advocated that atheism just means a lack of belief in God. Um, but studying at university, I found that this just kind of doesn't exist in the academy, right? Like in, in academic works, it's always used, the term, I mean, atheism, and it's always defined in all of the dictionaries, all the philosophical dictionaries, as the belief that God does not exist. Why, hello, my fellow apes. I hope you're well. Around a month ago, Alex O'Connor, the fifth horseman of new atheism. I hope it should be clear by now that I'm really not trying to affiliate with the new atheist movement. <laughs> All right, fine. The first horseman of new new atheism expressed potential endorsement of atheism being defined as the metaphysical proposition that there are no gods, as opposed to the epistemic psychological state of simply lacking a belief in God. This, no doubt, made the likes of Steve McRae and Cameron Bertuzzi erect in more <laughs> ways than one, and it also resulted in a few of you asking for my views on the matter. Well, I've been meaning to share my views for quite some time now, since the gatekeeping by some atheists, and indeed some theists, has escalated to frankly absurd degrees, with it now genuinely averting earnest intellectual exchange. So what I aim to achieve here is two things. The first is to defend both definitions of atheism. Yes, both. And the second is to encourage everyone, no matter which definition they prefer, to greater appreciate why others might prefer the other definition. But before we delve into the details, let's just hear a few examples of what theists and atheists have to say. Where's my cup? I need a fresh coffee. What does atheism actually mean? If you look for an answer here on YouTube, you'll pretty much find the same one across the board. Atheism. 
Atheism is only the lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. It is a lack of belief in God. A lack of belief in God. Someone who lacks a belief in God. So if you are an atheist, it's just simply lacking that belief. A lack of belief in a particular deity. All it means is I lack belief in a deity. Atheism is, in a broad sense, the unbelief in God or the belief that there is no God. Many atheists argue that it's a label that shouldn't really exist at all, as we don't create names for other non-belief systems. Atheism is not just the absence of belief in God. An atheist is a person who maintains maintains that there is no God. An atheist is somebody who doesn't believe there's a God. I am not convinced there's a God. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm convinced there are no gods, um, although that is a subset of, hey, I don't believe there's a God, and then there's a subset that is, I, I believe there are no gods. Bro, I just lack a belief that evolution is true. That's it. I'm an uh, evolutionist. I'm not making a claim that it's false. He is an a Lincolnist, so he does not believe that Abraham Lincoln existed. I get accused sometimes of having a strange This belief. isn't one of Bertruzzi's best Bertruzzi's moments, I, I this lack interview. No. Um, <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. Like, even as satire, it was bad. Yeah. I, I mean, I can appreciate having a joke like this, but I think that if you're trying to actually make some serious sort of argument, there's a better way to go about yeah. it. I mean, one thing I will say is everything that's been said up until this point, a lot of them are your your typical uh, YouTubers. So a lot of the understanding will all be coming from the same place. And a lot of that will be coming out of um, specific circles in America with certain goals in mind, probably. Um, and it's sort of one of those ones that has spilled out onto the internet. It's not saying that, you know, you can't use that definition by any way, shape or form, but there's there's a definite commonality. Um, I think when I've looked into it um, myself and spoken to people who don't get involved with online conversations or don't listen to atheist podcasts and things like that, they will all define atheism as the proposition or belief gods do not exist. I, I say all I think um, when I've done, you know, I've only met a couple of people who are outside of the internet that will say don't believe in gods. They won't necessarily say lack of belief. They'll say don't believe in gods. Um, and when I pushed one of them, he said, well, what's the difference between the two? So I explained the semantic difference and, you know, um, but the, the, the sample size we, we could say here is you're looking in a particular environment. Though equally, we could say Alex O'Connor's um, uh, definition at the beginning saying it's always defined a particular way in philosophy is equally wrong because it isn't. Um, it is most commonly defined as the belief gods do not exist or the proposition gods do not exist. And in pretty much everything you read, it will be used that way. But there are others that have argued for different usages. Um, I mean, you, we've done presumptively atheist, which was uh, a look at Flew's work in uh, 1972, The Presumption of Atheism, where he wanted to move away from the normal use of atheism from um, uh, uh, the belief gods do not exist or the, the proposition gods do not exist to just not believing in gods, you know, and he had a positive and negative atheism. And he also had a bit of a, a method to go along with his stance. Um, so, so far, this has been a very specific group um, and I'm not sure it's particularly indicative of the, the whole picture here. Yeah, although I, I do think that it is quite representative of the overall sort of YouTube space in discussion when it comes to this, right? There is a lot of people in here and I think it, it's, it represents quite well, you know, the types of arguments that have been made uh, in, on both sides. Um, Most definitely. So I, I think yeah. like, I found it quite fair, honestly, uh, so far, like the representation of the overall state of the discussion. And, like, Leaf. maybe it's yeah. not the time. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, no, maybe it's it. not the time now, but it's like worth pointing out sometimes because many people say, you know, that people like, you know, the new atheists are the ones that popularize sort of the lack of belief definition that is not strictly true because as we said you know there, there were like even in philosophy this is a, a thing that has been discussed and still is discussed to some extent um but even like within the new atheists for example dawkins famously you know in his book the god illusion has a scale from one to seven if i'm not mistaken the and belief in scale, that, yeah yeah that's how he sees um 
you know, the difference between, um, I guess, theism and atheism. And on that scale, though, like uh, you can see that uh, atheism is generally understood as the idea, you know, that there is no God with varying levels of sort of certainty. comfort, I guess. Yeah, and yeah confidence, certainty, so, however so, you want to yeah, describe it. it. Yeah, even even among among the sort of uh, new atheists, you know, there are people who define it differently. Because I've seen some streams that say, you know, that take you know the God delusion as a book that argues for the definition, like for a lack of theist or lack of belief. I don't want to offend uh, people who take that as an offensive term, um, lack of belief definition. But that's not the case, right? Like the book has in in it the scale, and in the in the scale, it's pretty clear, you know. Uh, that, for example, step seven, if I'm not mistaken, is, you know, I am 100% sure that there is no God, you know, and the other ones are sort of, I think it's likely that there is no God and so on. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then in the middle, you had the true right agnostic now. bit as well. Someone who is completely yeah. uncertain if their God or gods, you know, do or do not exist. So, yeah, I mean, there you, there you go. Um, I suppose, I don't know if it's right to bring it up here as well, is, Generally, what I've seen from philosophy when they've been discussing it, it's very rarely been that lack or absence of belief. Yeah. It has been more to the does not believe. Now, there's been lots of different discussions around it, and there are, um, but it's probably, maybe not for now, but worth bringing up the difference between uh, does not believe and, and lack of belief as well. But let's carry on for now. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. I'm I'm an a Lincolnist. Atheists then are people who believe that there are no gods. Atheists then are people who believe that there are no gods. Okay, so that last clip is of Graham Oppie, who is recognised as one of the most eloquent and prolific atheist philosophers of our time, with even the likes of William Lane Craig considering him an absolute powerhouse. So who do you think is the most formidable atheist today, the most formidable champion of I today? think without a doubt it's Graham Oppie, your yeah. fellow, yeah. Uh, your compatriot. Yeah. Uh, he is scary smart. <laughs> scary smart. And in the prior clip, Oppie certainly seemed to come down hard on defining atheism as the metaphysical proposition that there are no gods. But let me just read a few words from his book titled The Basics of Atheism. Not everyone uses the words atheism or atheist in the way that I do. Indeed, Oppie makes it very clear that there are multiple ways that atheism is defined. Yes, he favours the metaphysical definition, which he places into a fourfold distinction, but he doesn't impose his definition on non-philosophical communities, like some theists make out. But we'll get to his fourfold distinction and other definitions in the literature in chapter 3. First, a bit of groundwork is needed. Contrary to popular belief, words don't inherently have meanings, they have usages, and it's for this reason that the definition of words change over time. But differently, the definitions of words are constructed and regulated by the minds of the people that use them. The word fun, for instance, has an etymology rooted in fun, which is an old word for fool, hence it once meant to cheat or hoax. In fact, it still in some senses retains this usage, such as when we make fun of people who use definitions that we don't like. Isn't that <laughs> right, Dr. Peoples? Like most people, uh, I was in the unfortunate position of, of being raised without being able to question belief in Lincoln. Truly, if this fine doctor isn't the embodiment of exposing <laughs> the intellectual side of Christianity, then I don't know what it's. But to wrap up on the usage of fun, today the word more predominantly has a meaning of having a merry good time, which is vastly different to its original use. To give another example, the word awe originally referred to immediate or active fear, but through religious association it became reverential fear, and now today it expresses the feeling of being humbled. Funny enough, that's funny in the modern sense, the word awful retains the negative sense, whereas the word awesome now has a positive sense. Awesome, right? And when it comes to the word atheist, the definition has changed nearly as many times as theists have changed their supposed objective morality. To quote Oppie once again, the denial of the existence of God's worship in particular places at particular times often attracted charges of atheism, despite the fact that those at whom the charges were levelled believed in other gods. For example, the Romans called early Christians atheists because those Christians denied the existence of the Roman gods, and in the later stages of the empire, many Christians called pagans atheists because those pagans denied the existence of the Christian god. Just to clear that one up, it was atheos they were using there. So that was the word that I mentioned right at the beginning, which uh, originally meant godforsaken and then became to be someone that didn't accept the gods of the state. Um, so it was the the root of atheism. And it's also where uh, there's a bit of a, an etymolog etymological fallacy that comes from it because people use the pure translation of the etymology to say without gods because that's like the direct translation and then say because it's that use that's what it's always meant and that's what it should mean today and 
obviously we all accept that language changes and evolves, but they're actually getting the original sort of definition uh, or the original use wrong. Uh, similarly to how some words don't translate properly from French, um, pomme de terre, for example, apple of the ground. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> uh, potato is what it means. And when you think about the way words are translated, sometimes you've got to think about more about their use. So the fact that atheos meant without gods, it was originally because they were God forsaken. They didn't have the gods support. They were without the gods behind them. It wasn't exactly as you might think. I mean, yeah, you can it, look at, oh, sorry, Philip. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say you could look to the etymology of skeptic and find that it refers to Peronians and followers of Peroni. So, you know, etymology doesn't necessarily determine how the, how a word is used today. Yeah, and I think to be fair, like he did a good job. I think you know pushing back against this idea. You know, he does. He yeah, pressed, like, he he put out many examples on how words change over time, and I think like. Um, like on this topic, uh, um, Stephen and I are pretty much on the same page. I think he did an excellent job here. And uh, like, if more atheists were willing to listen to this bit alone, I would be absolutely happy because we see it many times on social media that someone is going to go like, uh, you know, this is the only correct definition, and maybe they'll use some sort of an argument that you know, like the ones you mentioned, um, that seem to be countered by this sort of reasoning that that Stephen is presenting here. So. Like I'm, I'm really happy about this bit. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I just wanted to quickly address Emerson. Uh, he said, you know, if you put together a montage of quotes from books about atheism instead of clips from YouTube, uh, you'd virtually only encounter one definition. And I think that's absolutely fair, and that that matches my my um, sort of experience as well. Especially especially when it comes to books that um, are not sort of popular books, but more like sort of philosophical works. That seems to be overwhelmingly the case. Yeah. Um, and like I think later on, I don't know if it's now the time, but later on he seems to acknowledge this. Uh, so that is a point up from, from me as well. Probably. One other thing I'd say as well is it's good that he's doing it because yeah. he's more well known within that sort of lack of belief community and people have a lot of respect for him. So they're more likely to listen to him than they are any any of us or you know any of the people that sort of push the philosophical definition the, they'll yeah. stop and go oh well if he's saying it and he's got a lot more viewers yeah yeah no that is one thing that that um i think we humans are all guilty of but we do tend to fall into things where we do follow people and if there is someone that is a bit more popular it carries a bit more weight and so whereas when we have the conversation that there's more than one definition we're regarded as theist trolls or cult leaders whereas someone like him trying to draw that line and go no guys there is there is might get a few more people at least considering oh maybe i am wrong with saying it's the only definition and start to think about why they prefer their definition um and exactly. it might not be because uh, it might be because it's generally how they use it online and that's fine there's utility to using that definition people understand what they mean in general when they have that conversation but they might also then go ah so when someone asked a question about if atheism is true maybe they're using a different definition of atheism and i should say to them well how yeah. are you defining atheism here oh okay i don't hold because to that definition uh, so that's why we're talking past each other rather than having an argument of you don't know anything about atheism yeah i've seen yeah. so many times people say that you know uh someone is straw manning you know you if, if they use atheism as you know atheism is false you know i've actually seen an entire thread i think on someone that commented you know oh william lane craig said that, you know so atheism is false but that is just a straw man or something like that and you know, it, you might say that it doesn't represent, you know, the way the way you view atheism. And then, you know, there's another question, I suppose, if the way you view atheism is sort of uh, coherent or stuff like that. But that is a different question. But it's definitely not a straw man because, like, there are uh, like a lot of atheists that define, especially in philosophical circles, that define atheism that way. And his interlocutor was defining atheism that way. So that was perfectly a perfectly coherent and valid statement for him to, uh, to push out. And so like, 
to, to claim that he is not understanding atheism or misrepresenting atheism is just, you know, to, yeah, to not see that there are these many definitions among which one, uh, which makes, in which this phrase that atheism is false makes sense. Also, like, yeah. I'm just happy that, you know, if American atheists just look at this passage of the video, you know, there's going to be some conflict and that <laughs> is already, you know, a good sign um, in, in terms of, you know, the progression of this sort of discussion. Because of this pejorative use, it might not come as a surprise to learn, that is, if you didn't know this already, that the word atheist predates theist. Thus, appealing to etymology is just not going to cut it, since usage very often couldn't care less about historical context. And, and there he's talking about it coming over to English. Um, so he's not necessarily talking about atheos, because atheos comes from theos, which I think theos came first. But uh, atheism came from the French atheism. I don't know how to atheism. pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just trying to say it how it's spelt. And that did actually hit the English language first. Uh, but it was used at that point in in time as uh, the, the, the denial or disbelief in God or gods. So let us really hammer this home from the outset. Anyone who claims that there can only be one specific definition of any word is at best ignorant of linguistics, and at worst, is probably trying to control a narrative. Flipping the script on its head, up. it's also important, of course, to appreciate that while we can define words however we please, there's very good reason not to do this. The philosopher Michael Humer, in his book titled Knowledge, Reality and Value, A Mostly Common Sense Guide to Philosophy, gives three reasons for not doing this, and they are as follows. First, this causes confusion for other people who are familiar with the ordinary English use of the word. Second, ordinary usage usually serves as important functions. Human beings over the millennia have found certain ways of grouping distinguishing objects, that is, certain conceptual schemes to be useful and interesting. And finally, third, it is actually almost impossible to escape the conceptual scheme that you've learned from your linguistic community. This is all to say that while words don't have intrinsic meanings, they do have common usages, and while one can redefine a word however they please, such as what Jordan Peterson does when he defines an atheist as essentially a murderer, <laughs> there's very obvious good reasons not to do this. What, in your view, would a genuine atheist be like? He'd be like Raskolnikov in Crime and Punishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to see Ozzy in there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, also, what he was just saying is like my cheese, ar uh, cheese sandwich argument that I used with a certain someone <laughs> who wouldn't accept that argument. It was just, yes, you can use words however you want, and it doesn't cause confusion as long as you ask. Yeah. 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 And it's also fine that he points out that, you know, it, it probably is a good idea not to sort of purposefully redefine words because that's just, you know, sort of extra effort that it doesn't need that to be done. That is not so, needed. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, this already sort of, I, I like it because it already distinguishes sort of this idea, th these two separate ideas. You know, on one side, you have the idea that, you know, words are completely flexible and, and that should be sort of hammered in to anyone. But then it sort of creates an additional layer where you start to see, Sort of this idea that maybe you know there we should have preferences in the way we use words right like you should prefer to you know to describe you know uh, what we call atheism to not use the word plant right even if you, you yeah. could technically but you know there are reasons why you should like you probably should have preferences in this sort of sphere and that's sort of the beginning i guess of you know arguments that I would use to argue for why I prefer a certain definition that sort of follows like flows from that uh, sort of yeah um, recognition and accepting that there are these common usages is the whole thing that enables us to have dictionaries yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I mean too many people don't understand the way dictionaries work in that regard you know, <laughs> dictionaries are telling us how language is being used and how people are using the language. Um, they don't, it, they're, they're not prescriptive, they're descriptive. And so, yes, you can look in a dictionary and find any number of definitions and you can look in different languages and you'll find words described, the same words translated, described in different ways. Um, you can find different English dictionaries that are at different levels, like a learner's dictionary to the standard Oxford English dictionary to uh, the Cambridge dictionary to, to, to the Google dictionary. <laughs> you know, they, they will all give you different definitions and some of them will give you multiple or all of the definitions definitions and some of them will go well no we're a, a university setting and this is how we use it within the university so this is the definition we're using uh, and and there's nothing wrong with that 
Yeah, and you can also look in like technical dictionaries, which might give a different usage to the common usage because the term is used in a specific way within that particular paradigm. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense that it would be done that way. Because if you're doing something where you need a technical dictionary, you want to be able to understand that. You don't want to, to have to go. Terms, yeah. yeah, you don't want to try and use the Oxford Learner's Dictionary for something incredibly technical because you're not going to be going, you go, what the hell does this mean? This just doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it, so if you go, if you go, something like if you're tempted to go, you know, I'm right because this dictionary says so, you know, then you it's safe to say that you haven't understood how dictionaries work. Really Absolutely. Right. Yeah. The, the bottom line. Yeah. You can use a dictionary for examples of different ways that it's defined. That's fine. You know, that, that you can yeah. use the argument and say, yeah, this word can be described this way it is in this dictionary, but it's never yeah. an argument for it is the only way it's defined and therefore it's I'm the right. Only correct way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At best, you know, uh, dictionaries are probably a good good sort of piece of evidence to say that this word is popularly used this way. Right. That, that yeah. would be like a sort of a good way to support that claim. You know, if you, if you present the dictionary, then it's safe to say that there is some proportion of the population, at least some proportion of the population that uses it that way. So, yeah. They are also handy for rejecting that person's triple board score in Scrabble. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but which dictionary do you use in that regard? <laughs> do you have to They're all the same in that regard. <laughs> so you can use any of them. Yeah. As long as you don't want to argue for what it means. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, not every dictionary necessarily has every word in it, was my point. Like, if you have an older dictionary, no. there might be different words to, say, a modern dictionary. Um, so, yeah, do you have to decide on that <laughs> before you go into your game? I demand Middle English dictionaries. <laughs> 1400 and no later. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Even though the dictionary didn't come till far after that. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to add at this point, or shall we continue? No, we, we can continue. Paul-Henri Terry Baron de Horbach was a French-German philosopher, encyclopedist, writer, and prominent figure in the French Enlightenment. And between the 1750s and 1780s, he ran the most influential salon in Paris, which was attended by ambassadors, nobles, and famous intellectuals from all over the world, including the likes of Adam Smith, Benjamin Franklin, David Hume, Denis Diderot, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, with most of them being known for their revolutionary ambitions. To again quote Oppie, the members of the Coteer were political radicals with revolutionary agendas. Many, including Hulbach himself, were avowed atheists. Unfortunately, the Baron had to publish his works anonymously, due to predominantly safety concerns, with the true authorship not becoming common knowledge until many years after his death. Within his work, he defended a mechanistic account of nature, maintaining that nature is nothing but matter in motion under mechanical laws, and he also championed a naturalistic view of ethics and politics. In time, I will, most certainly, dedicate a Champions of Reason episode to him, but the reason I bring him up now is to read a few words from his book titled Good Sense Without God. He wrote, All children are born atheists. They have no idea of God. Now what's really interesting here is that we have one of the first atheist authors explicitly expressing atheism as an epistemic psychological state, as opposed to a metaphysical proposition. Or in other words, de Horbach endorsed factheism. He claims that babies are atheists since they have no conception of the gods, they lack belief in the gods, and thus are atheists. Now, does this mean that this is the correct definition of atheism, that we should define it as an epistemic psychological state? No, again, of course not. But this does largely undermine the narrative that Lactheism is some new atheist political scheme to bolster numbers and avoid the burden of proof, etc. Which is a Yeah, you go first, Dave. I think we're probably going to say the same thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, and it's a bit of a hasty generalisation here, because... Just because in the past it wasn't used in that way doesn't necessarily that there was an intention to gain popularity for that reason in the contemporary era. Indeed, and and, and equally, uh, it it wasn't necessarily commonly used that way either. And also, we have more specific terminology now. We, as a species, tend to put things in clearer and more concise genres, if you will. You consider how we classify different species. We consider how we classify different music. 
I mean, there was one point where electronic music was basically just regarded as as house. <laughs> now you've got many all different house types. Or rave, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now you've got many different types of house, and they've also broken off into your different types of trance. And then you've got your old school dance, and it's gone into uh, yeah, your break beat and your garage and your drum and bass. And then with even within drum and bass, there's different types of drum and bass, and you know. It's, uh, <laughs> no, that's and, a favorite of yeah. yours so i mean also, even if something was used that way we have clearer terminology now to describe what we would say babies are in comparison so it's not saying that there's necessarily a wrong use you know it, he is showing that there was at least one person who thought that it should be used that way it's just saying that perhaps we can define things a little bit clearer now well, the other thing I want to say is um, I'm not saying that everybody who uses that lack of belief definition is doing so for political purposes or, you know, to gain more numbers or anything like that. But to dismiss it completely and say it's not these things because of this older usage, I don't think it's taking into account all the facts of things like the American atheist and how they proceed. And it's just not quite accurate it's not wrong but it's not quite accurate well even with our conversation with aaron ra um on twitter uh, when he came out with his whole rocks are atheist thing uh part of the conversation he alluded to the fact that his he thinks that um specific labels are not inclusive enough and he wants more numbers to be part of american atheists so that they can actually say how many atheists there are and i said well why can't you just address how many non-theists there are they're all atheists yes okay but they don't necessarily want that label uh no because they lack a belief so they're yeah okay forget that i understand that's how you define it but different people define it different ways. I understand you want everybody to be called an atheist because you're the American atheists, not the American non-theists. But really, could you at least accept that there are people that define it differently? There are different usages. And instead of trying to force your label onto other people, you might reach more by going, this is a site for atheists and non-theists. You know, <laughs> and just yeah. doing it that way and they, they all of a sudden they take that that prescriptivism out of what they're saying and they might secretly regard them all as atheists that's fine you know in the same way that i will put people into different categories in my head so that i can think about their specific uh ontological or epistemic position you know that it it works for me that way but i know that they prefer to be called a certain label so I will call them that label, <laughs> and and that is that's the way to do it. You know, call people by the label that they want to to have. But if you do internally categorize them a certain way, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it yeah. helps sort things yeah. out. The mind's a messy place, especially mine. <laughs> um, I, sorry, Philip. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say quickly, um, I sort of agree with Draper when he says that doing those kind of things and demanding that everybody take on the atheist label and deny agnostics and apatheists, it doesn't really do any good for the community itself or for the reputation of atheists. It's rather than demanding that others acquiesce to a certain definition or acquiesce to a certain label, we should just learn how to have these discussions and join forces even under a banner of non-theism, because it's better. It, it's mm. simply more productive. Yeah. And also, like, I, I want to say that, um, first of all, I think we would all here have, like, we would feel uncomfortable calling children atheists, I think. But that is largely because we sort of prefer the other definition. Uh, but I might also say, you know, if we, if we, if culturally atheism uh, was used like as a synonym of agnosticism, let's say. Let's say that that is the case. Let's say that everyone that uses atheism uses it to mean basically agnosticism, basically, you know, not taking a position on the matter, something like that, you know. Then I think we would all sort of have much less of an issue with that, uh, you know, and that just goes yeah. to show that this is sort of the thing, right? Like you see how a word is used and you, you see that many atheists, you know, tend to have very strong opinions on, on the matter. Um, you know, at least very strongly, uh, they're very strongly opinionated that they don't have a belief. Like, at least that, you know, uh, I think it's fair to say about all atheists. 
Um, and so, you know, you feel that it, that's wrong to ascribe to, to children because they are not really strongly opinionated on the matter. And so like the usage determines why you sort of might feel uncomfortable using that word uh, on something that you do not feel applies. No, yeah. but then there are also other arguments because maybe you could say, well, let's let's say that we have let's say that atheism means essentially what I would understand as agnosticism, right? And then we subdivide atheism into strong and weak atheism, you know, to to have like um, actually then, then weak atheism would be essentially agnosticism, which is also at the present the case for, for, from my understanding. Um, but then you you would sort of have, like here is when you can start to make certain arguments i think you know when you're sort of starting to question well why am i defining you know the belief that something is false uh using two words one of which is sort of you know does usually mean sort of like agnostic but there's a different position you know why am am i having this because it feels like you're having a divide between theism and atheism that is strong and then a less strong divide between sort of weak and strong uh, atheism, and that is just based on your observation of, on the words, because the structure here, by itself, without you knowing anything, suggests that there is a stronger divide between theism and sort of agnosticism in this case. Um, you know, if, if it would be labeled atheism, then the, the, there is a stronger divide between theism and atheism that there, there is between weak atheism and strong atheism, because you're using like almost like as creating subcategories, right? And and that's yeah. That's sort of that's where I start to have issues partially with that because that starts to suggest to people that there is not only sort of a way to use things, um, it's not merely usage. That that structure itself starts to suggest, you know, that there should be a reason why these two categories are grouped together and that they are sort of much more distinct from this other side that affirms that God exists, right? That is sort of suggesting to you not anymore just like labels and, and how you use them, but it's sort of suggesting how you should, should think about the issue. You should think about yeah. the issue that there is this thing and then the, there's this other camp and within this other camp, there are two sides, you know? And like, I don't know if we, we can get to this, but at some point, you know, th there is an argument to be made that, you know, th this definition has a symmetry problem precisely because technically, you know, there's no reason for any proposition to prefer thinking it false and to prefer thinking it true. At any at any point, you know, there is no reason to to prefer grouping, like making a bigger group with sort of people who do do not want to side either way. You know, there is no reason to prefer to group them with people who think that the proposition is false than with people who think that the proposition is true, right? Yeah. So so that sort of thing seems to require some sort of justification. You know, why are you grouping these two camps together rather than the other two camps, rather rather than people who think that. Uh, the proposition is true and that are uh, neutral because you could just as well group these two uh, groups together, right? You can make a larger group and they have sort of weak and strong theism. I think uh, Stephen mentions that uh, at some point. Um, so, you know, because you, you'd have to provide reasons, right? Otherwise, the structure just seems off in some, in some sense. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going to say uh, about it for, for now. Um, we've had some comments come in, so I'll uh, I'll address them now before we continue with the video. Yeah. Um, Intrigued Feline says uh, one of the issues that arises is that people generally don't like to be challenged on their particular usages, and this one is incredibly valid. I I think it's like we talk about how um, certain theists have uh, deeply held beliefs, right? They, and when you know, don't attack the believer, attack the belief. But actually, by attacking the belief in the way you're doing it, by calling the belief stupid, it's it goes. You know, the belief is attached to their ego and their entire life, and it sounds to them like you're calling them stupid. And going, well, oh no, I'm only attacking the belief doesn't really make it. Well, if you're saying, you know, uh, drawing a distinction with a particular definition and challenging that definition, especially if you're doing it in um, a less than charitable way, um, you will get someone's back up because it, it, it is in a way a deeply held belief with them. They strongly believe that atheism is defined this way and it's the only way because that's what, you know, Aaron Ra has said and this person has said and the American atheist said and all the online YouTubers that they've ever watched, they've all defined it that way and all of a sudden you're saying it's something different. Well, clearly it's you that's wrong. You must be that theist troll. You're not one of us. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm definitely with you there. That is <laughs> a big one. Um, I think as well, when people adopt a label, 
they're not just adopting it for a particular definition. There's usually more meaning that comes with it than that. Yeah. Uh, so that's why they prefer that. Like, yeah. there's a lot of talk about how if you're atheist, you're rational. If you're atheist, you know, you're a critical thinker. So that comes with adopting that label and grouping it to one side rather than the other. Yeah. yeah. Also, like I should say, just on this note, I, I welcome the challenge, right? Like if anyone wants to argue for a lack of belief atheism, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. And I'm more than yeah. happy for people to, to argue for that. I actually would want people to argue for why they prefer this definition. That would be great. But if you are someone who prefers, you know, um, lack of belief atheism, then, you know, I would love to hear why you prefer that. And, and, and you know, we can discuss them. You know, that, that's sort of a basis for discussion. But so many times you find that, you know, that that's really not, you don't get that way because it's just sort of a dogmatic thing, you know, distinction. It is what it is. And, yeah, it is what it is. Atheism is just this. Everything else is incorrect, right? So, you know, if we would actually get to the step and you, you still remain convinced of, you know, lack of belief uh, that that's the better definition, I'm fine with that, right? As long as you sort of build up your reasoning behind that, like that, that would be already a great step in the right direction, in my opinion. Yeah. And we've already given you your first point there already tonight. There is utility to using it online because that is how it's generally understood by people online. But we have specified that it's probably best to stipulate your use, especially if you're writing an article or getting involved in a debate and saying, I'm using atheism this way and explain it. But there you go. There's at least one reason to use the lack of belief definition because of it that's how it's generally understood online so it has some utility um so uh, and Frieder actually says cosmic skeptic said in 2017 that he was talking with the head of aa uh, of the aa and he said exactly that that it's better to say atheist than agnostic to create a bigger voice for atheists um so i mean th there you go uh I mean, I know it's, we've only got a, a couple of us saying this here, but there is uh, at least a, a collective saying that this statement that I was making earlier is uh, is true. And it is it is on the Twitter timeline. I can't get it for you anymore because Aaron Ra has blocked me. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can search for tweets between the two of us and find it. To be fair, it's probably not the best conversation. I tried to stay polite in it, and I think towards the end he had pissed me off. Um, so I probably don't look too great <laughs> towards the end of that conversation. Uh, got the scummer mentions yet. Yeah, look at all the uh, subgenres within metal. Exactly. And and more and more come out because there's different ways of describing it. You still know that it's metal at its core, but actually it's got a bit of a, a different sound to it. You know, maybe it's a little bit cleaner. Maybe they've thrown some electronic music in. Um, there's so, so many different ones. Uh, he also says, I don't think... Uh, everyone is using it for political reasons, but a lot of big atheist organizations do use it for that purpose. And yeah, it makes sense that they do. They're trying to increase their numbers. What I don't understand is why we don't have <laughs> big non-theist <laughs> or big secular organizations instead. If you're an atheist organization, but actually you want to get everyone who is, is secular or non-theist, then why why don't you focus on that? Why can't you change it? Oh, the branding's going to cost us too much to change. Do you even need to relabel it? I would be happy if the American atheist said, "This is we are the American atheists, a site for non-theists and atheists." Even though atheists are a type of non-theist, but like if they did it that way, it would be perfectly fine, and they'd be more inclusive that way because they're not being prescriptive. Um, there's a question as well uh, from Trainwreck. Hey, nice to see you, Trainwreck. Um, he says, Aaron really became a rock atheist where he said that. Yes, he did. Um, if you want on uh, answersinreason.com, there is um, an article in response to Ra's What is Atheism? Um, there's also a link to a three-part series that Dave and I were on Chesh's stream where we're going through the article. Um, that's seven hours of watching, or you can just read the article, which will probably be any time take you about 15 minutes um but in that he does say rocks are atheists he also claims rocks are agnostic as well um <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah <laughs> uh i as i seem to have to say it every every week uh babies no they're not atheists and rocks <laughs> no they're not atheists no. either <laughs> 
Um, uh, God the scummer. Yeah, you're saying what a lot of us are saying. You don't mind people using any particular definition to to describe themselves, but don't push it on everyone else. And that's right. You know, if you prefer the lack of belief definition, use it for yourself. Don't tell other people that they're that. You know, maybe if someone doesn't know where they fit, you could say, well, this is the label I use for your position, you know, find out where they sit. And you might have someone that way, get into it that way. You could also be honest and say, well, actually, people use these labels in different ways. This is my preference, and this is why it's my preference. But, you know, there are also these other definitions, and maybe you'll prefer one of those. But I think, ultimately, we'll both be called atheists. And I mean, to be fair to Stephen Woodford here, he does say something like that later on in the video. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, God, there's loads of comments coming in now. Uh, yeah, Alistair, you've got a good point. Weak theism versus weak atheism is where the issue comes up. Um, because... It's special pleading if you don't allow theism to be defined in the same way that you define atheism. So if atheism can be a lack of belief in God's existing, then uh, theism can be a lack of belief in God's not existing. And therefore, if you're someone that we would describe as an agnostic because they lack belief both ways, they've considered the position and they don't believe the God proposition is true or false, um, <laughs> they basically under these terms, are both a weak theist and a weak atheist. And you can't have a theistic atheist or an atheistic theist, and it just doesn't make sense. I mean, <laughs> like to, like to, to, to defend this briefly, like if you define terms this way in, in terms of, you know, what they lack, then absolutely someone could be a weak atheist and weak theist at the same time. Like it, it's perfectly consistent to say that, you know, it's not, it's not impossible. It's only impossible. Or is it power consistent? No, 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 it's not, it's not, even, no, it's not even that, yeah. It's not even that, because if you, if you're defining terms this way, like it only is an issue if define, if you define terms differently. Um, if you define terms differently, then there is an issue. If you, if you don't, then, then there is no issue in that. It's just that that shows sort of like, it gives you one reason, I think, uh, to, to find a bit of tension in the way it's usually understood in common language, right? Because you would never, you would never categorize someone as being both an atheist and a theist in the way you know you usually see the terms you used and so there is like the a bit of tension right in your in your system it would make sense but you know it, it is not it is a good argument in my opinion because it just shows that it is it produces this result that you know if you imagine it being worked in in the real outside world let's say you know in conversation you just feel that it's not as effective and it's it's probably just going to break down at some point you know and and this is this is what I, what i mean you know you can like if you don't look at usages because one one other way of defending it could be simply to say you know well the way theist is used is usually always pretty much you know that uh, someone who believes in god you know the belief that god exists or something like that you know and if, because of this very popular usage, it would be sort of unpopular to, to define theism in terms of what they lack. Right now, it's still it's still the case that you would be special pleading if you say you're not allowed to do that, right? Yeah. But it's of course the case that you know in most cases theists you know would not want to adopt that definition because they usually tend to you know understand each other by saying if I'm a theist I believe in God, you know. So you could you could say you, you could make an argument sort of based on just popular usage, why, you know, this sort of symmetry is not there and, you know, what that would be essentially a symmetry breaker, you know, why you, you, you would define theism in one way and atheism in another way based on pure popularity. But if you look at it purely structurally, like, like without, you know, if you have no knowledge on how it's being used, you can see that sort of the structure is a bit weird, you know, that, yeah. that's, and that's, that's the point, right? That's, I mean, it's not a knockdown argument, in my opinion, but it just shows you that the structure is weird and there's a bit of, of weird tension in there. And so, you know, if you have another way, why, why not do that, in a way? Uh, God the Scummer raises uh, yeah, another good point and um, says, you know, uh, there are folks that insist on their uh, definition being used and then have the nerve to label anyone who pushes back as being pre prescriptivists whilst yeah. doing that themselves. And I mean, that's that was one of the biggest headbutts that I had with Aaron Ra yeah. was the fact that he was telling yeah. us that other definitions were wrong and it was only this definition. And I was saying, no, there are other definitions and this is why I prefer this one. Um, and, and, you know, getting 
getting shouted at for being a prescriptivist by saying, I, I have a preference, this is why, you can use whatever one you like, but it's mine isn't wrong. <laughs> You're just being wrong by saying mine is wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, Steve, nice to see you there. Uh, <laughs> um, Apparently, Rationality Rules saw his review and took some things from it. So, yeah, cool, awesome. That's I good, mean, I yeah. think, I think, Steve. Like, generally, there isn't much that we're going to say too differently. I think there's just probably a few points on on either side that we might say in different ways. And I think that's that, that that's something that can always help someone as well. Hearing the same thing said in a different way can suddenly make you go, ah. Yeah, I get that. Um, I know that's, that's one thing you that... should watch my video too. Yes. It yeah. says the same thing as rationality rules in a different way. Yeah. Oh, we mentioned that one at the, the beginning. It's Atheism, Tale of Two Usages. It's a 30-minute long video uh, in the sci-fi playlist um, that Dave did uh, with some nice relaxing music behind it. <laughs> and none of the production values of rationality rules. He's actually a really good video maker. <laughs> Yeah, we're cheap and nasty. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I grew up in a council house. I can't do much better. <laughs> Don't even have stairs in mine. <laughs> Chesh, good to have you here as well. <laughs> uh, oh, and late as well. How you doing? Um, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of you in there. Craig Reed, how you doing as well? Awesome. Uh, it seems like there's uh, a ton of you here now joining us for this. Hopefully um, you managed to, to catch up on the beginning as well. Um, I'm going to carry on. Oh, uh, hey, Kimo, as well to you. Um, so I am going to continue. Do I have an, a video of Aaron doing that? Um no, I, there's the article where he's uh, done that. Um, and a big long forum post. Yeah. So and, and <laughs> he <laughs> he blocked me because someone linked him to. That's why he blocks me. Someone linked him to the video I was in of Chesh where we were re reviewing his post. But if you want, um, Autumn, there's a a, 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 vi a post on Answers in Reason called In Response to Ra's What is Atheism? And there is a, a, a lot of um, examples of him there, quote mining and being a little bit dishonest and looking for his specific definition. And there were times when he'd display an article which would say, look, here's three definitions. See, I told you it's this one. And you're like, well, no, it's just giving you three definitions right there and then. Um, so uh, not specifically a video. Others might have a video of him doing it, but there are articles and forum posts and, and Twitter feeds and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, I'm going to get back to reviewing the rest of the video now, and we'll get to some more of your comments in a bit. It's a very vacuous interpretation. Now, let's pause for a moment and take another look at those featured in the compilation at the beginning. Interestingly, all of the theists featured favour the metaphysical proposition of atheism, that is, the assertion that there are no gods, whereas, to the contrary, those featured who self-identify as atheists overwhelmingly favour, like de Horbach, the epistemic psychological definition, that is, lactheism. I freely admit, of course, that my sample was skewed, but as even the critics of lactheism tend to acknowledge, including myself, by the way, there's almost certainly very good, entirely earnest reasons as to why the vast majority of self-described atheists opt for lactheism. Now, as someone who, for most of his time as an atheist activist, wholeheartedly favoured lactheism, let me try and explain what I think the lactheist disposition is. Consider the following two propositions, geocentrism and reincarnation. Further still, let's assume that you knew nothing about these topics. Given this scenario, if someone was to present you with an argument for both of these metaphysical propositions, and you happen not to find any of these arguments convincing, how would you describe yourself in reference to each? And more importantly, <laughs> yeah, I, like I, this is the part of like I don't know if it's better to to just play it out till the end of this section because I have a ton of stuff to say about this section. <laughs> this is actually this is actually the, the piece that I d disagree with the most. So yeah, I, I would love to. I don't know okay. if we can take it all in a swoop or. All right, all right. You you tell me when you want me to stop it. Importantly, what label, if any, would you favour? In the case of geocentrism, would it be correct to say that you affirm the proposition that geocentrism is false? No, it wouldn't. In this scenario, you'd simply not be convinced of the proposition that geocentrism is true. You'd simply lack the conviction, the belief that geocentrism is true. If you actually wanted to affirm the proposition that geocentrism is false, you'd need to have arguments to the contrary, and so you'd need to be relatively well-read on astronomy and physics. 
still, would you really go around telling people that you're agnostic as to whether or not the Earth is the centre of the universe? I wouldn't, at least in an informal setting, I wouldn't. Switching gears, what about the proposition of reincarnation? Would you say that you affirm the proposition that reincarnation is false? If you would, then all I can really say to you is good luck, since this thesis is essentially unfalsifiable. You'll almost certainly never be able to affirm that it's false. And so, strictly speaking, you should go around saying that you're agnostic about reincarnation. But most of us don't do this, do we? We say, no, I don't see reason to believe that reincarnation is true, which is akin to saying that we lack belief in reincarnation. Now, this is precisely how I used to exclusively look at the proposition of theism, and this is what I strongly suspect is the foundation and reason as to why lack theism is so prevalent. As I'll expand upon in chapter 4, I still think this definition is valid, but since I've had both the interest and opportunity to digest a decent amount of philosophical literature, I am now more than happy to also affirm the metaphysical proposition of atheism, or at least local atheism. I'm genuinely convinced that naturalism trumps theism both in terms of explanatory virtue and ontological commitment. But the vast majority of atheists are not happy to affirm this proposition, since they don't, in fact, affirm this proposition. Just as they don't, strictly speaking, affirm the proposition that reincarnation is false. They simply are not convinced by the various arguments in favour of theism, and they are also not interested in affirming the opposition. To put it bluntly, they don't care about God, and who can blame them? Most theists don't care to defend the proposition that reincarnation, astrology, or chakras are false, and so to expect, and often demand, that lack theists defend a position that they don't actually hold is absurd. Like Isaac Asimov, most atheists, as in lack theists, would say, I don't have the evidence to prove that God doesn't exist, but I so strongly suspect that he doesn't, that I don't want to waste my time. Given this, I think okay, it's very easy stop. to see why most atheists... I think atheists... It's, it's best to stop, stop at that quote, because it represents pretty much everything that I, I dislike about this segment. And, you know, I, I'm going to go as far as to say that if what he's saying is true about the fact that, you know, um, lack of belief atheists prefer the reasons to use this definition because of, of the reasons he listed, as he strongly suspects, then sort of my, my worries about that definition are strengthened in a way. Because, like, a lot of what he says here is precisely what I feel, think is problematic about using the definition that way. And this sort of confirms that it... It's not just merely a way of, you know, saying things, you know, defining things, but it's also it also trickles down into your understanding uh, on the matter, you know. And this this is the problem, right? If you don't have the evidence to prove that God doesn't exist, that is fine, right? First of all, he is like a bit of a, I guess, you know, probably misunderstanding on the burden of proof. I don't know, right? Like we usually don't necessarily need for you to prove that God doesn't exist to hold a justifiable belief that God doesn't exist. Um, in, in proof here, by proof I mean, you know, sort of um, conclusive evidence or something. You don't need conclusive evidence to be rational in believing something. Um, so then he says, you know, but I so strongly suspect that he doesn't that I don't want to waste my time. So this is this is the problem, right? Like because this <laughs> this is saying, you know, this is essentially saying I like, you know, this represents the, the lack of belief definition. But he's also saying that I strongly suspect that he doesn't exist. And like, if you don't see the tension here, then I don't know how to explain it clearer, right? Like, <laughs> here, here it is clear that what he's saying is that he has a belief that it is more likely that God doesn't exist, right? Yeah. But he's, he, at the same time, this is pretty much an endorsement of lack of belief atheism here. But what he's saying, like, this is basically to me like endorsing irrationality because he's saying, you know, it's okay for you to hold a belief that, you know, a positive belief that is more likely that God doesn't exist without bothering to, to justify anything about, you not even internally, right? And that is an issue. That is a big issue because, like, I don't know how you see rationality. There are many ways to look at rationality, but I think it's safe to assume that, like, a pretty core component of every system that talks about rationality is that you should have some sort of justification for what you believe to be true, right? Like if, if someone yeah. comes across to say and he says, oh, I believe this, and then you ask him, why do you believe this? And I don't have any reason for that. I just believe it, right? You would call him irrational. And that's probably justified that you would call him irrational because he just goes around believing stuff. In this case, believing that, you know, it's more likely that God doesn't exist, strongly suspecting that God doesn't exist without being bothered to, to, to waste your time to look into justifying this idea. But if you don't want to justify this idea, you don't want to waste your time in justifying this idea, then you're irrational. You're just irrational because you're holding a belief without you even even wanting to go into the effort to, to get some justification for that. At least to yourself. You should be able to justify at it to yourself. At least to yourself. Yeah. Yes, at least to yourself. And this this is basically the entire section put into a quote. And I, that, like, I found this quote beautiful because it just is, it nails my point so hard in, in this 
it's like it's perfect to, to to and and again if this is sort of the motivation that drives the lack of belief definition then i have big concerns because this is precisely why what like the, one of the biggest reasons why i dislike it it's not just you know in argumentation it's not just about you know when you converse with a theist that you say you know uh, oh, like God is like Santa Claus, and then you know they ask you to justify put the, uh, you, your position, and they they say, you know, <laughs> oh, like just lack of belief. Like uh, rationality rules, rules. To be fair, you know, uh, later on in the video actually argues against this sort of method. So I'm glad for he's, that. Yeah, he this, says it's this, a dodgy move. Exactly, it's a dodgy move, and I, I'm glad that he recognizes this. But at the same time, this to me is as well problematic because even if it's not in an argumentative context, you know, you saying that you're fine holding. Like having a belief that you know it's more likely that God doesn't exist, which I take to like if you strongly suspect I, I, something, I, I take it that to mean that you sort of find it likely that that is the case, right? Without you getting into the effort, not even the minimal effort of trying to justify that, and that to me just is means being irrational. And 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 even more to the to the point, I'm sorry if I'm rambling so long because like, this is this is a, a long section. But like before in the video, he he has two examples about geocentrism and about um, uh, what was it, reincarnation? Reincarnation. Yes. yes. So like on both of these occasions, I think he says something. You know, oh, you just simply don't believe that you know that reincarnation is true or that geocentrism is true. You know, but but you don't want to sort of you you don't have the knowledge to look into the rest, right? But the, but then you know he goes something like you know but would you really say that you were you're agnostic no would you really find that word that fitting you know no I wouldn't right he, he goes to say I, I wouldn't find it fitting but then the question becomes you know why do you not find it fitting right because that that's that's the core of the issue right because it, it is my opinion that you probably don't find it fitting because you don't want to say that you sort of do not want to take a position on the matter as, as agnostics do, or that you think that they are sort of roughly equi equi equibalanced, if you will, right? The, the two ideas that it is false and that it is true. And so but you wouldn't call yourself that, but you would still rather prefer the stronger term in, in a way, you know, of, of thinking, you know, I don't know what term that, that would be in that case, uh, because it, it doesn't make sense to call it atheism, I guess, a geocentrism or something, right? But it seems to me that that there is a problem there, right? If you if you were not willing to take on the agnostic label, because essentially what you have to do is figure out where you stand, right? Because as true as it is that you can just, I mean, that you are lacking a belief in geocentrism, right? Let's say that you lack a belief in that, that's fine. It is also just as certain that you either believe that geocentrism fall, is false or don't believe that geocentrism is false, right? These are the two options. Low of excluded middle, right? Either one or the other. It's unescapable. You have to pick one of those those two on the other side yeah. of the spectrum, right? So it's it's not a complete picture for you to say, oh, I just lack a belief in this, and 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 pretend like this is sort of a a complete epistemic schema because it's not a complete epistemic schema because there is some very real things that concern that proposition as well, which is the side of thinking that it is false, right? And you have to figure out. How you stand with respect to that side of the proposition? Do I think it is false, or do I simply, I mean, do I do I have the same level of skepticism that it is false as I am that it is true? And in your answer to that question is going to determine, you know, where you stand. And and if you answer that you lack a belief that it is false, then you shouldn't have a problem calling yourself an agnostic in a way. You shouldn't feel that tension. Right. right. And if and if you and if you find very, you know, if you think that it is probably false, right. Then you have some work to do. Like, then you have like either you have some work to do and you're trying to justify that position, or if you don't want to justify that position and still hold to that, then you're being irrational to me again, and we go back to the same problem. So like again, this is this is just this is the biggest problem of the video for me, right? Like I, I really appreciate the entire video because of sort of the progress that is making this discussion, but this this bit here was for me the biggest problem. Because it seems to me that if this is the best reason that you have to to use that definition, then there is some there are some problems there, at least for me, to figure it out uh, and, and to figure out and to smooth it out. And because that is not okay but by my uh, side. Yeah, and I also think it sort of highlights the problem with looking at beliefs simply as the existence or non-existence of one particular mental state with regards to a proposition or claim 
Yeah. And that belief should be looked at as our attitude towards the content of the belief. So do we believe it true? Do we believe it false? Or do we just not have an attitude towards it at all? Yeah. Yeah, I that think, as well. I think you yeah. guys have actually said basically everything I was jotting down to say. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. No, 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 it's good. It's good. Um, maybe I'll say it in a different way, though. Um, so th the first thing that obviously we note here is, is, like you said, is potentially a misunderstanding of the burden of proof, also known as epistemic justification. Now, people may, may separate um, the burden of justification and the burden of proof, but... Um, you, 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 unless you're saying something definitely is the case, you're, you, you don't have to prove it true. You just have to justify it as rational. Um, so where it says here, like Philip mentioned as well, um, I strongly suspect he doesn't. That is you saying that I find it most likely. I think it's unlikely that God exists in, you know however you phrase it now i've done a couple of shorts recently and one of them has been on belief and different definitions of belief and so it's something you accept as true something you accept as uh, most likely most probable something you conclude is the case so if you strongly suspect something you think it's probably this that's a belief so as, as Philip noted there, you've got the disconnect there. He's trying to justify a lack of belief by saying he has a belief God doesn't exist, which doesn't make sense. And that's why there's the other short that I've done recently on rationality that explains how you can justify a belief as rational. And it also talks about evidence. Um, uh, that was the first one I did, evidently evident evidence. Um, so those three there sort of start to broach this topic. And I think there's a big issue within the atheist community, assuming one, that uh, the burden of proof is only on someone making a claim, um, misunderstanding what evidence is, assuming it has to be scientific evidence or empirical evidence that actually counters evidence, which even in the courts, it, <laughs> it really, really isn't the case. Um, the misunderstanding of things like beliefs and rationality, we've heard people say that a belief is something accepted without evidence, which isn't, you know, what a belief is. <laughs> so, but even under that definition, I, I, I strongly suspect that he, he doesn't. Well, that, that would still count as a belief under that yeah. definition as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah. Yeah. And, and when it came down to things like talking about uh, reincarnation, I'm happy to say I, 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 I believe it's false. I also say that I wish it were true. You know, <laughs> I, I like the idea of it. I think it's kind of cool, but um, <laughs> I still believe it doesn't exist, and I'm happy to, to give my justifications for it. Just why I'm happy yeah. to give uh, justifications why I believe gods don't exist. Um, and, and, and about that, right, he says that it is unfalsifiable, which, like, first of all, I, depending on what you mean by unfalsifiable, this could be true or false, right? But it doesn't mean, like, I, I don't take it as, to be unfalsifiable because there are certain things, at least not, you know, sort of just the, the concept of, of reincarnation. For example, you could say, you know, oh, if reincarnation is true, we would expect people to, you know, that are born again to remember certain past lives or something like that. You know, we would expect this to happen. It doesn't happen. And that is modus tollens, right? A deductive argument. Therefore, reincarnation is false. That is what Or that there would be a limited number of people. We wouldn't keep having more and more people on yeah, the earth. Right, There'd right. be a limited number of souls being reincarnated or something and, like and, that. And, Exactly. And, and I don't mean by this, right? Like, of course, there are responses to this. You, you could say, oh, well, after you die, you forget stuff or all oh, there are other alien planets in, in which you get reincarnated or something like that. Right. There are some ways to get around that. But this just adds weight to the theory. Right. You know, you, you are you're patching the theory up. You're making it bulkier. You're making it more heavy. And then you can you can also argue from a from a purely sort of. Um, I guess, theoretical virtues perspective, you can say, you know, I can explain just as much as you can with reincarnation. I can explain just as much as, you know, bodies just die or something like that. You know, when, when you're yeah. dead, that's it, right? I can explain just as much, but my theory is simpler because I'm not positing this other entity that does that. So on parsimony, equal explanatory power, you shove that off. And, and, and that's essentially what you're... Um, yeah, you have an argument there, right? You could also argue for some sort of physicalism, right? Like if you think that you can argue for physicalism, then you think that you can argue against reincarnation because if physicalism is true, reincarnation is false. Right? It entails like, it, yeah. It entails it. That, that's 
that is a, an entailment of physicalism, right? So if, if you think that, that physicalism is true, and if you think that you can argue successfully for physicalism, then you also think that you can argue successfully against reincarnation. So there are ways to argue against this stuff. Right? And the same for geocentrism. But like bottom line, another thing, just like last thing that I wanted to point out, point out about this quote, I'm not trying to say that, you know, when, when I when I said all of what I said, essentially, I don't, I'm not trying to imply that everyone should, you know, you know, inform themselves on God and try to figure it out and spend their entire lives on it, right? By all means, if you don't want to waste the time on it, then don't waste your time on it. I'm fine with that, right? But what I'm saying is be honest about what you believe and, and 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 based on that, you know, figure out how 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 everything works, right? Because if you're honest and you really do strongly suspect that God doesn't exist, right? Then you know you probably have to do some minimal work to justify that. And if you're happy to live without that justification, then you know accept that you are being irrational in this. <laughs> because like I, that's I don't see how how it can go any other way, right? So, like, I, I'm not saying you spend your entire life in theism and then thinking about that, right? If you don't find that interesting, but you know, if you find yourself believing that it's more likely that there is no God, then you know, you better have something, probably, if you want to be considered rational. Otherwise, you are, and, and I know that atheists love to claim that they are the most rational people on earth, <laughs> right? But that we is, do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is a thing that you should probably look into if you're really in that position. Uh, and if you find yourself being genuinely sort of either I I don't like I'm I don't think you, I can evaluate this or oh, I think the evidence is roughly and um, like equal roughly counterbalanced then it's fine right then it's fine that you know you're gonna say that you know I think it's roughly counterbalanced or something like that and you probably would need reasons for that as well by the way right because you'd have to justify that position as well you know you'd have to some ha have some sort of justification to say that you know the evidence is roughly counterbalanced. But, you know, that is a different position. You just be consistent with, with what you believe, yeah. right? That's, that's the bottom line, you know? And the, what this quote is saying is, I have a belief one way, but I'm not willing to do the work to justify it, essentially. And that is a problem, even if, even with, like, outside of the context of conversation. So, yeah, that's basically it. And, sorry to butt in. Um, just going back to what you were saying about being rational and what you were saying about epistemic justifications, a part of being rational is having epistemic responsibility. Um, and epistemic responsibility speaks about how we only pass on things that we can say are true or we have good reasons to believe are true. But another part of it is that we have internal justifications for what we believe. If we are being epistemic, epistemically responsible, we have justifications for what we think and what we believe. Because when we speak to other people, we have a responsibility to at least give good arguments if we are attempting to persuade them. Not just, yeah, not just persuade, but just to be able to say, this is what I believe and why I believe it. And again, if you enter into a conversation with somebody, you enter into a kind of social contract during that burden of persuasion that you're going to be honest about what you believe. It's just a social contract. Um, Dave, there was something else that you mentioned um, earlier where you sort of started to draw the line between don't believe and lack of belief. Do you think now's the right time to go into a bit more detail on that? Or do you want to save that to the end? Um, I mean, we can do. Um, generally, there's two ways to look at something like um, doesn't don't believe this proposition. Now, if you speak about don't believe simply as in a psychological state, so if you think of something like agnosticism on both, you have the lack of that positive psychological state towards the proposition on either side. And don't believe can be sort of reduced to a lack of belief. But when speaking about beliefs in terms of our attitudes towards something, it doesn't necessarily mean a lack of belief because it could be taken in terms of you have an attitude towards a particular proposition and that attitude can only come from an actual assessment of that proposition. 
it's an assessment of somebody saying, here is this proposition, here is my evidence, and you saying, I don't believe it. So it doesn't necessarily reduce to a lack of belief. But it, it would entail it. in certain states. But yeah, but it would entail it. So, I mean, I mean, I know I, you could think about it in ways that you, you're splitting hairs. Some people might think yeah. about it, that you, you're splitting hairs. But when someone says, I don't believe this, they are talking about the content that is being described there. Whereas lacking a belief can be had by someone who isn't even aware of the thing there. When you say, I lack belief in God's existing, what they're saying is I'm absent of the psychological state God exists. Whereas if you're saying, I don't believe God exists, you've at least considered it. You might be being unclear with your position and you might need to um, clarify whether you're, you're agnostic or, or actually holding the position God exists is, is false. But you're you're at least responding to the content of the proposition by saying I don't believe. Um, so I think it's a useful distinction. But equally, I mean, when you're talking about the whole language thing, there are a lot of people that don't see any difference between the two. So you know, if you're trying to have this conversation, people will say, "Well, I don't see any difference." And you can even describe the difference as Dave and I have just done. And they've gone, "Well, I still don't see any difference." Um, it's understandable because it all depends on how you look at beliefs and whether they are actually attitudes towards something or whether it's just the existence of the mental state towards that proposition or not existing towards that proposition. So there you go. So it's it's even even within <laughs> in that arena there there can be some confusion between the two and some people can equate them and some people can see them as differently hopefully we've explained why at least uh, i see don't and lack of belief as two slightly different things um and i mean i'd be interested in your thoughts on it as well you know let us know if you see uh any, any issue with what we've said um and if you've got any arguments one way or the other that we haven't mentioned for the the don't lack distinction yeah as, as i said like i i usually tend to think that don't just reduces to lack essentially uh, at least in most cases as they've argued but I, I appreciate that there is like that you could see a distinction in there about you know sort of considering thing versus just not having access even to the thing or something like that yeah that's like, why i like all it, these innocent distinctions. yeah that's what, exactly like for me just you know putting innocent in there covers that uh that position as well and it's sort of clear that it is a neutral position so like that's the easiest way to, to, to think about yeah. it from this. so i i tend to not see that big of a divide if any uh between don't and, and lack and I also think it's that something. people that usually use that, like argue online, tend to use these interchangeably. So I'm fine to use them interchangeably as well, like for the yeah. most part, at least. Yeah. The way to think about that innocent one, though. So uh, innocent is the term that that Oppie coined for for babies. Um, they cannot um, consider the proposition of God's existence um and hold beliefs in regards to it so they are absent of that psychological state or any psychological state in regards to this particular proposition uh, or any others at, at that this particular age um they they do technically lack or are absent of a psychological state but it's kind of different to an agnostic who does not believe it to be true and does not believe it to be false. An agnostic has considered the uh, proposition of God existence and they've gone, well, no, I don't believe it true, but I don't believe it false either. And that entails a lack of belief both ways. And I think that's why I would I, I would say I say like I don't see. believe is, you know, I don't believe I could say a baby does not have that belief, but then the baby cannot say I don't believe this because they you know, can't I, consider I, it. I see what you mean. The way I would simply go about it, I guess, is say, you know, that, you know, both babies and agnostics would sort of lack belief either way, but, uh, or for both sides, but, you know, for agnostics, I would say, you know, oh, but they have considered this and still lack a belief either way because they, you know, either think that it's not possible to make a determination or because they think it's sort of roughly counterbalanced. Yeah, yeah, I see. Like, I see what. Yeah, you you sort of yeah, baking in that meaning. Attitude. 
yeah, you're baking that meaning into sort of don't believe as opposed to the lack of belief, and and that works just as well. Uh, so yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it's merely a practical reason why I, I I guess I use this interchangeably because I tend to see in discussions that it is used interchangeably. So most I, people, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think um, you're right, but then you could also make the same argument for using the lack of belief definition of atheism as well, because in discussions that you're having online, most of the people yeah, 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 would be using it that no, way. That's true, but yeah, that's true. But I, I think that there are good reasons. Uh, like, I don't think that the reason why I prefer uh, the sort of uh, philosophical so-called definition is just based on usage, right? I think that there are very good reasons to prefer that definition that are sort of outside of you know popularity. Well, while I don't necessarily think that I see the same sort of power in the distinction between lacking a belief and just uh, sort of uh, not don't believing, believe. and yeah, so so in that in that case, I would be fine to let myself be driven completely by sort of usage and practical considerations, I guess, in in popular discourse. While with the other definition, I would not be because of certain other considerations, like the ones, like a few of the ones that I already mentioned. Plus, you know, the, if it leads to quotes like this, you know, the lack of belief definition, then, you know, I, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, kindly provided by rationality rules, one of the reasons why I would sort of um, dislike that definition as well. If, yeah. If this is what it mo mo motivates it. And I mean, I, I think if you're going to have um, an actual fruitful and positive discussion with whoever it is you're having the discussion with, if they're using don't believe to describe a psychological state, it's not really worth the time quibbling 